Good morning, Mr. David Tracy. Uh, welcome to Jalopnik's uh, Let's Chat About the Bronco Excuse to Make a Video video. I'm Andrew Collins, for those of you watching. And today we're going to talk 2021 Ford Bronco because we have to. But I think before that, we need to discuss your attire, Mr. Tracy. What's going on there? Oh, um, just wearing a – it's sunny outside, just wearing a standard hat that one wears. Yeah, um, okay. And it's, you know, I don't want to get a sunburn, so I'm just wearing, you know, just a, a shirt. That's all, all this right. is. <laughs> so your, uh, your, your biases are, are worn on your sleeve, so to speak, or on your head. Look, I just want to make it clear that I am completely unbiased here. Oh, wow. Cheapaholic. Okay. All right. I so. see how it is. <laughs> We were asked to provide some off-road credentials before we get into it. So obviously David spent a lot of time developing the Jail Wrangler, has, done, has been off-roading all over the place. Uh, I did some time as an off-road guide in Australia, done a few Bajas, done quite a bit of recreational wheeling in all kinds of machines. So we're looking forward to seeing the Bronco in the wild. You know, all the hype, all the hype, and yet somehow they still killed it. At least it's I amazing think machine. It. Yeah, I agree 100%. It's, uh, it's, it's objectively perfect. It's like the exact design they needed to do. And uh, it, it's just retro enough. It's, man, I, it's so funny. Remember when we were thinking that it was just going to be a rebadged Ford Everest from Australia? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> this is great. This is so much better. I'm so happy it's not that. Uh, yeah, um, let's talk about off-road features. Let's just get right into it. Yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, so it, basically there's seven different trim levels they're opening with, including a first edition. So really six trims, uh, all has the same architecture, right? They're all on the same T6 frame. Is that, is that the case? It's it, you, similar to, to Ranger, you know, independent front suspension, uh, right. solid rear axle, body on frame, uh, mostly steel body. Uh, it's got some aluminum, um, aluminum on the, on the hood, the door, the doors, the rear swing gate. Um, as far as like, off-roadiness it seems like any of them can get the sasquatch sasquatch pack which is locking diff bigger tires 35s yeah the fact 35s. that you can get Oof. 35s from the factory which i mean on wrangler the biggest you can get you know when i remember when i was at chrysler and the jl was you know still going through its design phases and i heard these whispers oh they're gonna make a 33 standard i was like no way they're like yeah dude standard 33 on rubicon i was like no how are they gonna do that you know, they got the bigger, you know, the, the ride height and the big fender flares. And now 35s on Bronco. Like, I mean, it's unreal. just, yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. Uh, and, and they've got all in the geometry. I mean, that's what really, I mean, the most important attribute of a good off-road vehicle is geometry. And if you look at the numbers on this Bronco, the geometry is phenomenal. Uh, approach angle, 43.2 degrees for the two-door. It's crazy. But, for both two-door and four-door. Departure angle, 37.2. Um, breakover angle, 29. Ground clearance, almost a foot of ground clearance on the yeah, two-door. 11.6. I mean, I mean, this is, it's great. You, this, you got this vehicle with very short overhangs, way off the ground. Uh, it's got underbody protection, skid plates on the fuel tank, transfer case, uh, you know, up in, up in the front. Um, it's armored. It's got great geometry um you know it's it's got you know of course it's got lockers front and rear it's got a low range transfer case you can get a manual transmission hell yeah I mean, oh and the 4.7 uh rear end talk to me about that like how how unusual is that yeah no it's that is a short rear end i mean on the wrangler rubicon you know the jeep will always talk about crawl ratio all right i I just can't resist anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jeep always talks the crawl ratio, right? Yeah. And that's their axle ratio times trans uh, transfer case low range times first gear ratio. Um, and on this Bronco, you've got a 4.7 axle ratio. The, ta the, the shortest axle ratio you can get only on the not, – not, I think only on the Rubicon uh, Wrangler is a 4.10 axle ratio. So 4.7 versus 4.10, that's huge. Yeah. Um, that said, the Wrangler can get you a four to one low range, uh, whereas the, um, the Broncos low range, I want to say is three point something, three point two ish. 
Uh, so it's it's not as short of a, of a low range, but um, but the axle ratio makes up for it. And the crawler gear, the first gear crawler gear of over a six to one, I mean it's unreal. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's three point six three point oh six low range, uh, and it's a six point five eight eight first gear crawler gear. I mean. That's unreal. So, so practically speaking, for those who did not grow, come up in the uh, Chrysler engineering circuit, how are people going to benefit from that, that shorter gearing in an off-road scenario? Basically, what it comes down to is you're going to get more, I'll call it thrust at the tire to ground surface because you're multiplying your engine torque by a larger number. So as you go through, the, through all this gearing, you multiply your engine torque and you end up with so much torque at that wheel um, that you just end up with it with a you know, I'll call it a thrust vector right between the tire and the ground and it practically speaking it lets you pretty much not even have to touch the gas and you can get up anything you'll do it really slowly in a controlled fashion and you'll just have so much it you know it'll feel you'll, you'll call it power man this thing's got so much power I can get over anything it's the wrong word but it's got you can get over anything. I mean, slowly. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, we're going to have to experience that. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and uh, I guess I think what's cool about this for me is you can, with that as goofy as the Sasquatch package name is, all those major features can be had on the base model, which is really cool. I think. So oh yeah. Hmm. Step up to the like $40,000 one or the $60,000 one. To get do that. we know the pricing for the Sasquatch package? Uh, no, we don't. Ford won't talk about any of the option pricing yet. They're only talking about uh, like the trim basics. So the base base is like 30 Gs. I don't, I, people have been asking about that on the forums, what the uh, Sasquatch package is going to cost. I think it seems like FX4, but with a little more good shit. So I, I okay, was, so what exactly does the Sasquatch package come with? It comes with uh, 35s, right? It, yeah, 35 inch tires, 17 inch, they're calling it beadlock capable wheels, uh, lockers, front and rear lockers, that 4.7, that 4.7 final drive ratio, what they call high clearance suspension. They don't, uh, they don't specify if that's just like what that is exactly. Uh, and Bilstein shocks and big fender flares. So that's actually a really freaking solid package. Oh no, that is a, that is a big deal because yeah. if you want lockers on Wrangler, you have to go to Rubicon. Like you can't get a sport uh, with front and rear lockers. If you can right. get a base Bronco with lockers, 35s, right. I mean, that not that the dream? Just a, yeah. a, strip, a stripped down model, but with lockers and 35. Like that's the dream. Yeah. I'm guessing that package will, uh, I want to say like the $5,000 neighborhood, maybe less. Seems about right. I mean, FX4 is only like two grand on some, but that doesn't come with a front locker. Uh, and it doesn't come with huge tires like that, or I, I yeah, yeah, or Bilstein shocks. It comes usually comes with like mm. ranchos or something. So that's pretty, that's pretty it's freaking big deal. Solid. Yeah, that's and I think deal. what people want to know is this: Andrew Collins, Jeep Wrangler or Ford Bronco right now? I mean, right now I would have to I would have to grab a Bronco. I mean, it's the new hotness. I I love the look. Uh, I like Jeeps too, and I think Jeep is going to retain its many fans, and uh, I don't think it's going to like sink the Wrangler, but uh, I, I mean, I, and the independent suspension is actually a plus for me, if I'm totally honest. I know that we can talk about this in more depth, than I know that you're a big fan of the solid front axle. I feel like the benefits in, like, in my level of off-roading anything up to like a easy to medium level trail the ifs is gonna be better and then no i mean you're not wrong i mean especially if we start adding velocity i mean if you start going over desert roads quickly yeah. the lack of unsprung weight is a big deal um i like solid axles for you know three main reasons one is robustness you've got your axle tubes in you know in the middle of this big thick steel tube so, so your axle shafts are not exposed you've got these u joints instead of cd joints which are really easy to fix if they break and they're really robust um, you can lift a solid axle really easily because you don't 
because you know with this with this uh, Bronco, your differential stays with the frame. So as your wheel goes down, your CV axle angle gets really steep, and that causes durability problems. Um, and then of course articulation is the other big deal for me. Like you're going to and Ford will admit, and I spoke with Ford engineers. They're not like they're not gonna say, oh, we can outflex or whatever. Yeah. They admit it, like the Wrangler will outflex us, but we are okay with that because we're better dynamically, our steering is way better. Yeah. We're better at you know, high speeds, rides better, etc. Yeah. I think it's just gonna come down to like what kind of wheeling people like to do. If you're up in like the northeast or like where it's rocky and slow Rubicon style driving, it's gonna be more of what more of the Jeep's ability. But I mean Baja, Johnson Valley. So Southwest stuff. I mean, Bronco is going to be freaking awesome. So I think, yeah, <laughs> I think Ford absolutely made the right call going with independent front suspension. Yeah. Cause here's the thing. If you go with a solid axle, like at a certain point, like you can only outdo the Wrangler by so much right. when it comes to rock crawling. Right. But if you go with IFS, you can outdo the Wrangler, at least theoretically by a right. ton in certain areas like dune running, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it, it helps them really distinguish themselves. I think it was a great call. Yeah. So so you're the uh, you're the one with the Jeep hat and the Jeep flag. Where do you where do you stand at this point? Well, let the record state that I am in a fan of old Jeeps, modern right. Jeeps. You know, but um, well, JL's JL's pretty JL is pretty solid. is pretty old. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty it's pretty it's pretty old, pretty old school in architecture. Yeah, exactly. So I like it. Um, but like all these other ones, renegade, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so which one would I choose? Um, I think aesthetically, I think both of the Broncos look great. The two-door and four-door. I think yeah. the two-door Wrangler doesn't really work for me. It looks like a cube, kind of. It just it's kind of short and upright, and it's kind of, uh, you know, it's it's not as interesting. I think the four-door JL looks really good. I think aesthetically, I right now I like the Bronco because it's the 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 hot the, yeah, the newness, new right? highness. Yeah, totally. And and there are areas where Ford absolutely looked at Jeep and was like, "Why are you guys not doing this? Like this is easy, it, it, like low hanging fruit. Like why is it that if I take my doors off, I have to freaking tie them to a tree or something <laughs> and then leave them and come back for them? Like right. that's stupid. Of course the doors should be <laughs> stowable." Right. Why are they not frameless on the Wrangler? Why, why do the doors have frames and they can't fit in the car? And you'll notice they put the mirrors on the freaking body instead of the door. So you don't need to like get some stupid aftermarket mirror when your doors are off. Which again, a low hanging fruit from Jeep. So like, dumb. duh. Yeah. Duh. You know, you take your door off and now you can't see behind you. Like that is such an easy, Ford must have looked at the Wrangler and said, oh my gosh, look at all of these dumb things about this vehicle yeah. that we can easily fix. Yeah. So I didn't answer your, your question, uh, and well, um, and I'm not going to. That's fair. That's fair. I, uh, I I think I've noticed on forums, obviously, and all of the internet, a lot of people who are mildly to not interested in cars at all have been talking about this as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. I I wonder if the Bronco is going to bring a lot of people, or at least some people, into the off road space for the first time. I think it definitely has that ability. Uh, I as think so far, too. Yeah, as far as, you know, if you're getting, if you're going wheeling for like the first time, uh, I guess one of the Broncos advantages might be those terrain modes. I, I am sort of, on modern vehicles, like with the Raptor, which has a bunch of different like off-road modes, with the automatic transmission, I think different modes of responsiveness makes a huge deal. With a manual, I don't think it's necessarily as important because you have so much more control over what the vehicle's doing anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't think people who are buying the manuals really want that, you know, the, the dial with all the different off-road modes yeah. as much. I, you know, this isn't, you know, I think the entry point is definitely going to be, this is definitely going to allow more people in than, than Wrangler. I think, in, so, in some ways, I think so. Everyone's buying Wranglers these days. I mean, like fa- it's, 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 family commu- it's a family commuter car at this point, yeah. four-door. But but there is a steep price of entry. There there are plenty of people who buy the Wrangler and they regret it because of, you know, they right. go over right. bumps and they a lot of head toss because that solid axle. Yeah. I think this Bronco has a potential to offer a lot of off road capability and doors off, you know, open air freedom as Jeep always yeah. calls it, but without as much of a sacrifice as Jeep. And I think that that could be pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, one thing I will note: you asked me which one would I choose right now. 
it all depends on how good the manual transmission is because the manual transmission on the JL, as far as I'm concerned, is is ruined compared to the JK. It's really? just not good. It, it's just it just doesn't feel good at all. It, it, the ge the gear ratios are off. I would still choose it over the automatic, but it's just not a great transmission. It's an ice and six speed. Now, if this Bronco's manual is a nice notchy one and feels good, I mean, then that's the, that's the one. I mean, that ultimately, it's all about the joy of driving. Hell yeah. I uh, I think Gitrag is the manufacturer for the Bronco. Gitrag, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's in anything else, that transmission with the yeah, I don't know either. six speed. Not with that crawler. Add, like they added a crawler gear to it or what. Um, but I mean, Ford has done some freaking great manuals. I mean, the stick in the freaking Mustangs that is awesome. Unreal. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So, I mean. That would yeah. make the difference for me. You know, like the power numbers are, you know, the torque numbers are better on, on the Ford, whatever. Uh, we don't know what the curb weights are yet. Ford hasn't edited right. those. Right. But if it's a great, you know, we know the 2.3 uh, uh, engine. We know that in the Ranger. It's a good yeah. engine. Yeah, it's solid. And if you make that to a really good seven speed, oh man. Yeah, Whew, I know. That would be it's the one to be get. amazing. The more I think about it, I, I think Ford's like greatest triumph here is they kind of, they split the difference between Wrangler and Forerunner and then just added like a huge dose of nostalgia. And it's like, well, crap, this is like such yeah. a good four by four. <laughs> now here's a question. Um, does this thing need a five liter V8? Need no. Uh, I'm trying to decide if it would even add it because, to be totally honest, if I'm trying to decide between a 2.3 liter manual that gets like I don't know 23 mpg on the highway, nah, it won't be that good. It'll be like 22 maybe, versus like a V8 automatic that gets 19. I'll probably take the four right now. Yeah, Personally. but if you could get if you could get the manual in the V8, uh, <laughs> sacrifice a couple of MPGs. Huh. Think about it. If, when I look at that Bronco, when I see these like dynamic like these videos uh, on the press site, yeah, in my head I'm already putting a loud V8 soundtrack to it. You look at that; it's such an aggressive. It's got these yeah. haunches. It just yeah. looks like it needs to be loud and just menacing. And just knowing that as this thing is flying through the desert. It's little four banger is making this little wheezy noise. It just detracts from it to me. It's a solid point. It's a solid point. I don't think we're going to get a five liter to be totally honest. I maybe it's like a SEMA product or so, I just don't see it happening, man. It's uh, mm. they, they don't think for whatever reason, I don't think they're going to do it, but do I need it? Do I need it? No, I, I, I would still be interested in, in getting a Bronco even with the four. Would it, would I buy it if it was available? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. It's hard to answer. That's yeah. kind of my non-answer there. But all right. So, David, final thoughts You're of off-road Bronco stuff. What do we leave? Um, it is excellent. I think Ford, they didn't go with the solid axle in the front, which is a smart move because why try to compete with that? Why not try to excel way beyond what Wrangler can do at high speed off-roading and, and those kinds of scenarios, on-road dynamics? Um, it's got lockers. You can get a base model with 35s and lockers. It's got skid plates. It's got a sway bar disconnect. It's got incredible uh, approach and departure angles. Tons of ground clearance. Like, what more do you want? What do yeah. you want? We barely even talked about the uh, like torque vectoring, turning, and the goat mode gimmicks because even without that, like the architecture is so solid that you yeah. basically don't even need that stuff. But I mean, whatever. Uh, yeah, and aesthetically, they freaking nailed it. So I think I, I think we should all be pretty excited to see these on the road come 2021. Yeah, can't wait to drive it. <laughs>